On today's episode of the podcast, we have one of my favorite people, most influential people, Coach Pete Stanton. Pete, Pete Stanton is a fun case to have on because he's been through it all. He's done coaching track. He's coached at the little schools in Montana. He's coached Olympians. He's coached All-Americans in the football team. And now he's the athletic director at Dickinson State. And one thing Coach Stanton does that, that you'll see in this interview is he's he doesn't wear a mask. He's who he is. He lets his personality show day in and day out. He's just a great guy, and he's someone that I personally look up to. Um, he's taught me a lot in my life, whether you know he was my coach in college and somebody that I think is a very, very big advocate for swim lessons, what we're trying to do here. So without further ado, head coach Pete Stan of the Dickinson State Blue Hawks. Here come the Bowers. Y'all ready to go swimming, baby? Come on. Give it up. Get out of that water. Try to tell y'all, it's swim lessons, baby. <laughs> Coach Stan, it's a pleasure. Um, thank you so much for coming into swim lessons today. It's it's awesome to have you here. And, and how are you doing today? Doing really well. Great, to, great to be here. Great yeah. to be here. You enjoying Arizona? Yeah, it's been good. It's especially this time of year. Uh, really enjoying Arizona. You know, after leaving uh, a couple of days ago and uh, pretty pretty cold and they get a lot of snow today in, in North Dakota so it's been uh, yeah been nice being down here and we've been doing a little recruiting down here as well right yes yes we uh, you know had recruited some uh, some of the high schools here and we had some guys that that, that had signed uh, with us and actually it worked out really well uh, uh, we're down for an alumni function but also uh, you know we're able to have the signing date for for some of the guys worked out right real yeah. right so I was able to go down there and uh, hang out there with some of those guys that are coming to play for us that's awesome and i mean that's kind of what makes dickinson special that's a great segue into kind of the small tight-knit community that dickinson state university is and and how we kind of transcend that into later years whether it's going back to homecoming doing a golf scramble it's just you guys do a really good job with that yeah no, it's been great i think that's as you know i mean that's what we always talk about is it family and the guys you know coming back well it truly and, is a family yeah it really is yeah yeah you know and some of your teammates just a few weeks ago you know i get a call from them and Hey, coach, we're in town and I want to see the new weight room. You know, they yeah. knew they knew we put a two hundred fifty thousand dollars renovation in our weight room, and and they came up and, and checked it out and went out for lunch and and did all that. And that's 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 the neat part about this whole thing. One hundred percent. What's Pete Leno's thoughts? I, I bet he's just loving that new. Yeah, weight room. he is. He's a little bit more room for him to uh, go in the back and shout do, out Pete do Leno. Some, Pete Leno and, <laughs> and some of his research. And you know, I you tell you what, speaking what that guy's done. You know, he's oh. been. Uh, asked by many of the major league and and professional organizations to to help uh, you know s do their personal training and and do a lot of their testing. Uh, you know he's gone to the NHL Combine. He's been at the NFL Combine. He's been just been out with the Yankees and was with the Rangers last year. And that's a guy at uh, Dickinson State doing great stuff. And now for everybody out there listening to the podcast, Pete or excuse me, what is Leno's kind of official? He's he's not coaching anymore. He's right. Like a right, right. He's he's uh, with our HPR human performance, and he's a in instructor of exercise science. And then he also has a company along with it that he does, uh, you know, with the exercise science that uh, you know that that he can do all those things and 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 train you know athletes. But then the nice thing about it is you know he has guys that that to help him out. You know, they're right. in our exercise science program, and so he uses a lot of that data and uh, all the all the things that he does. That it's really state-of-the-art uh, technology. The way he tests athletes and our and our students, our exercise science students, get to do it uh, yeah. with him. So it's really cool. I always laugh when I think of Coach Leno because every day we'd leave class, he'd look at me, and go, "Dallas, be good or be good at it." <laughs> <laughs> and he was always a character. He made class fun. Yeah, and, and that's kind of another thing that makes Dickinson special. It's you know not only is the football team very close, but you know everybody on campus. You know yeah. all the teachers. You know if you want to talk to him after class, get some help. You know get Seth Moore Kirky to tutor you after school, you know, whatever you need to do, you can do. And, and, um, that's kind of what makes Dickinson special. Have you saw that as, cause you're now the athletic director. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Most what, definitely. Most is, definitely. All the sports teams like the football all team. The, there? Yeah. All the sports teams are, are that way. And they, you know, it's just a tight unit and, you know, you go to a, a the, we had a wrestling duel last night and, I lost um, it. Oh. yeah, 
the wrestling duel last night and you know all the other teams are there and and supporting each other and it, it's the same across the board whether it's a football game or a softball game they you know they're all in it for the same uh, reasons and 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 all that they may not have be quite as rambunctious that you guys were at the basketball <laughs> games anymore but we're trying to get them a little bit more fired up than you guys than they are than they than they should be and uh, get them a little bit to your guys's level we'd like to get them back to your guys's level a little bit yeah they got to have that pre-workout that i like to call the spur bar <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah yeah they got to get yeah get warmed up get ready to go but yep. uh, yeah yeah and I, and I know you didn't participate in that in the, no, in the no. pre-workout but uh, <laughs> a lot of the others did it was good to have a guy like you that kind of kept everybody in line and uh, did all that <laughs> at the end of the night you know everybody would come to me i was kind of like the big brother of the group you know i had to take care of the the, the shepherd of the dickinson <laughs> yeah. state <Blue> <laughs> yeah. something you know, like that yeah something exactly like that. um now coach let's let's cut to what i think is one of your greatest moments so far in, in your very historical coaching career and that is after your first collegiate win who gave you the the water bath boy i can't remember <laughs> you know i just caught him out of the corner of my eye and uh yeah that, would that happen to be you and and and, and josh borman yep. and uh uh, that that was a, a pretty neat uh, time because as you know I mean we were we went through a, you know you you and you you and your class went through some tough times with uh, you know we, we weren't very very strong for a couple of years and and uh, um, we uh, you know lost a lot of games and you, your guys' senior class just you know hung in there and that was pretty cool at that time because you remember that you know we lost two games before that mm-hmm. and we lose to you know thought we were better and then we lose to Rocky and we yep. actually played pretty well and then we lose to Northern and then pretty soon you're wondering if you're ever going to win a game is I know. It, you know and then I think that was really the thing that set it off that game not not you with the water setting it up <laughs> but that was pretty cool like i still got that picture down in my basement and yeah. I'll, I'll keep that forever but then that really i think the really that really took us there you know the, we finished the year seven and four we'd lost our first two games and i think we lost we we won the next week at, uh, again and won two in a row and then we lost at home to valley city and mm-hmm. and, and that was the last time that we lost at home for five years. Right. You know, we went on a five-year run where we didn't lose a whole game, and you know, so you guys were the ones that kind of paved the way for all wow. that. But it was, it was fun for fun, uh, fun, fun year to to do that to see to see the success the guys the guys had that year. Well, it was just funny. I mean, because you were in a very unique situation. You were in a situation where you're taking over for the great the goat coach Hank Bijou. Yeah. Um, had been there how many years? Oh, he was there 40. And he's a head coach, probably 37, 36 years. And, yeah. and you were the defensive coordinator, right? He was, yeah, I was on the deep. Coach Hofflin and coach I. Coach Hofflin yeah, and yeah, you. Yeah. And then you come in and you've got to fill these shoes from, from Coach Bijou. And you're kind of stuck in this weird kind of time and period where you're trying to figure out what, who we were as a team is identity-wise, what, what kind of program we were going to have. And you were kind of starting not from scratch, like we still had the good Blue Hawk layout, but this run you guys have put on here has been fantastic and just kind of explain to the people what your mindset was you know whether it was from scouting players to picking a coaching staff to just putting the thing together to make this run well I think a part of it was just it was just all that you know and when we changed you know we, we switched conferences a couple times too and and we were in a conference that was North and South Dakota teams and 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 what happened is a couple of the teams of the conference went division two and we were going to stay in AI so we were in the frontier conference for a couple of years and and which was about tough. That, which is tough and about, so about that same time you know our talent level wasn't real strong across the board on both sides and we were in a really tough conference and and it was a t- couple tough years and you know, I do got a credit to guys nobody quit nobody gave up it was just really tough and then we came out of that you know and, and moved back but even that next year being out of the conference back in our old conference it was still tough to get wins you know yeah. we lost a couple games but but then you know I think once we the light came on and and with that part of it I think we had some you know some good coach you know coach Leno came back you know later you know coach Hoffman who you talked about the defensive coordinator he stayed on and you know and what he bought into uh making sure you know as far as we're re- recruiting you know kind of base not so much that we didn't have to change a lot but just had to win earlier you know yeah. we started getting out and, and uh, talking to guys from Wyoming and and North Dakota and South Dakota and, and getting out early and and uh you know identifying those guys and 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 then we had you know good good coaches you know coach Schillinger and and coach 
Coach Walker uh, were there at the time as well, helping out. Well, then we had Shan. Shan, come yeah, in, which was yeah, a big Shan break. Schillinger, who was a guy that played four years with the Atlanta Falcons. He was and then, awesome. Yeah, he Man, came he in for best. that same season, and he was mm-hmm. there helping out. And so Shan helped out, and 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 we were able to, as we talked about, I think we had a, we were about one and three, and came back and ended up finishing the season seven four. And and you know, there's no way we, you know, I remember beating Dakota State and yep. and in overtime, and I think even if we'd have played them two years earlier, I don't know if we would have been able to do that. You know, just that ability to do that and then then we took off you know and and uh you know we still aren't perfect and still aren't there yet but uh, just started winning more consistently and 2015 we won won a conference championship for the first time in about six years and and then won five in a row uh you know since then and that's the first time that it's happened in the in the school history so that's been fun too well i i gotta take everybody back to kind of when the team started gelling that first year when you were head coach and i was a senior and you had the talent contest and we, that was the best that's kind of because i mean i look back on that and i'm trying all these new different avenues you know trying to become a stand-up comedian trying to do this trying to this new podcast trying to just you know find all these new opportunities and kudos to you and the coach staff for coming up with that because that's from like holy shit i can kind of make people laugh yeah i mean there's yeah. other instances don't get me wrong <laughs> i mean whether at parties or you know even in high school yeah. but you came up with this idea where you're like, okay, the last two, it was, it was during two days and you go the yep. last week or last night, just kind of get everybody together. We're going to put people in groups of 15 yeah, and then we're going to have either come up with a skit or, you know, a talent guitar and, and, uh, why don't you take it from there? Yeah. Tell yeah. no, tell them about the, when we were at the spur and then we were talking about that and I was doing my imitations and you guys, and that's, yeah, oh, he did the imitations. Every everybody. My my wife's not here right now, but she said every time I see Dallas, he gives me your imitation. I said I haven't I haven't seen that yet. And you know, they really it was kind of rigged up because uh, they you know they had the basketball coaches and a couple of coaches yeah. come in to do it, and they said, well, we have to give Dallas first for impersonating Coach Stanton because anybody with balls that big to be able to. <laughs> To be able to impersonate him in front of him, in front of the whole team, and do a good job of it, we got to give him first. But it was great. And then Josh Borm did, Daniels. I believe, our athletic director yeah. at the time, and everybody had fun with that. And uh, that's one thing about you know we could laugh about it, and you guys knew that you could you know do that, and we'd laugh about it. And you did a Coach Schillinger impersonation, I oh, hear yeah. too. You could do that one pretty good too. And 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 ha- everybody having a good sense of humor and fun about it, and and uh, you know keep everybody loose and and, and yeah. do that. That's good. Yeah. It brought everybody together. Yeah, I mean you know if people we didn't know the best of all of a sudden now we're becoming good friends and just kind of it transcended from there it was awesome to see yeah now, yeah let's go, let's go back a little bit here um in your career now take me back to the young days when did young pete stan truly know that that not only football but sports and education was going to be a major impact in his life i think pretty young you know my my mom was a teacher and my dad was a coach and there was four boys and we were at every practice and i mean starting from when i can even remember and and we were hanging around every practice, you know, running through the lobby, having my dad yell at yeah. us and shoot, you know, kicking the balls away from us because we're shooting around. I think, uh, you know, and, and my dad coached every sport. And I think that, at the, I think pretty, pretty young, I think we all knew because all four of us went into coaching and teaching and uh, uh, we, we it just kind of had it in our blood and, and uh, had that competitive spirit and it started really young. And then you went you went to college at Dickinson too. Yeah, yeah, right? I did. I went my first semester to Carroll. I was there one semester. Did not like it there. And and uh, <laughs> Coach Coach Bijou had recruited me quite a bit. Okay. And, uh, and and Coach Bijou recruited me about three times. You know, the first time when they didn't go, and then and then he we had we got together at Thanksgiving and said, "Why don't you come over?" And then actually, when I came back over and coached, come too, on, so, Pete. You yeah, know you want to. Yeah, that's that's how Coach yeah, Bijou talks. Yeah, yeah. Pete, come on. We'll go hunting. <laughs> we'll you know we might even have a few Coors Lights. <laughs> Pete, come on. <laughs> <laughs> or go hunt. Yeah, we'll definitely go hunting. Yeah, go hunting. <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, yeah, that, you know, then I played there. And, and it's the same thing at that time. We had a really good family yeah. atmosphere. You know, guys like Travis Olson and Danny yeah. Olson and 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 guys, uh, you know, from Crosby, where you're you're from on our team, Darcy mm-hmm. Strong. And then Scott Molander was a basketball player. And, and you know, we, we had a really good teams, you know. Unfortunately, you know, the way the things were set up at that time, we had the number one team in the nation in football. Really? In 1987. And the bidding procedure is different. We traveled 
the first game and got beaten overtime by Carroll. That was the only time that we were behind the whole game was at overtime of that last game. We had an undefeated season and then and lost in that game. But sometimes those are the ones you think about more than than all the good times the and wins, all the yeah. and all the wins that, that you're involved with. But I had a great experience uh, at, at Dickinson State before I started, you know, teaching out in Montana. So yeah, so you go to Dickinson, you you get your teaching degree, and then where do you find yourself after college? You know, I went to uh, I, I coached the, the the finished up the teaching, and I coached one year at Dickinson State, and I was, was speaking coach Bezo. You know, I was going to help coach uh, Hoffman at the DBs. Uh, yeah, and he said, "Well, Dale Lennon." <laughs> Dale Lennon is going to UND, and then of course Dale Lennon goes on to UND and wins a national championship yeah. there. But we need a linebacker coach, so okay. uh, it was better than the guy the year before me, and because he had two that, that year before me, there was two offensive linemen, and Coach Bijou couldn't decide which one to put at receiver coach. So he said, "Well, you uh, you were the center, <laughs> you've handled the ball a lot more. You coach the wide receivers." <laughs> so he he uh, did that. But anyway, then I went on to Eastern Montana in, in a small town in, in Terry, Montana. Mm-hmm. And I uh, thought I thought I'd be there one year, and I was ended up being there nine years. And, really, and we had a lot of good teams. We were in the playoffs every year, and we were in, in win a couple, couple state championships. And uh, it was it was a good good experience. So then, after the Terry time, where did you was in Belgrade, Montana, for two years? Okay, and uh, then about and then in two thousand, what had happened at the time? Coach Hofflin and Coach Lena, who we talked about, they got out of uh, coaching and track, and uh, there was track opening. And Coach Bijou called, and Coach Hofflin called, and said, "Hey, we're going to have a football." opening with a head track coach and ended up uh, coming back Pete to Dickinson. Stan all over it. Got that head, uh, yeah, so it came that, back in 2000. You know, and then this brings us to the next greatest point is your time as the men's or men's and women's track coach. And you've had some fantastic success with that as well. Kind of t- tell a little bit and talk about kind of some of the athletes that you've had come through and, and the success you guys did. Have yeah. Yeah. We really had some, had some good ones. And, you know, the first couple of years we didn't have those guys. And, and the first year, I think we finished sixth or seventh in the conference. And then the next year we signed some really good kids from Eastern Montana and then about the same time, I was contacted by some reps from the Bahamas for, uh, at, in basically it was a parent association trying to get athletes from the Bahamas placed, and they were having a hard time getting them into the United States. And I'm sitting in Dickinson, North Dakota, thinking, well, they aren't going to want to come here. <laughs> yeah. If they do, they're going to stay. And we got them to uh, – we got we didn't have anything to lose. We weren't very good. And so we're, we'll just get a couple of these guys up here. Well, three of the first guys uh, happened to be Derek Atkins wow. and, and uh, Aaron Clear and, and Trevor Berry. Well, Derek Atkins goes on in, in 2007 and finished second in the world in the 100 to Tyson Gay. Mm-hmm. And Aaron Clear runs in, a, runs in the Olympics for the Bahamas in, in 2004 and gets a gold medal. And then Trevor Berry finishes third in the world in the high jump a few years later. And then uh, they also had a guy that, uh, hey, we're friends with this guy his name's Ramon Miller oh, and we'll get well, let's, let's have him come up to Dickinson I said yeah so I didn't have to recruit that guy and uh, <laughs> he comes in and and is a is a, is a two a two-time national uh, track athlete of the year uh, he wins uh, you know 14 or 15 individual titles he has school records will never be broken and and then he's the guy in 2012 but the U.S. hadn't been beaten in the four by four relay in many years and he passes a runner from the U.S. and in the anchor leg and Bahamas wins their first gold medal and he's from Dickinson State so that was pretty cool that is amazing and doesn't that make you I mean the whole coaching staff must have felt good like we're changing these guys lives for the better yeah we do it was it was really neat and and they and the thing about it is is they could have went anywhere mm-hmm. and it goes back to that family thing that you talked about they really could have went anywhere and they stayed you know, they could have been running at Arizona State or well, they, right. we came down and ran a meet down here and, you know, Ramon won that meet and, and really we could have been running anywhere and uh, they stayed and, and appreciated the people that were around Dickinson and, and uh, we had a lot of a lot of fun with those guys and of course we were able to win, you know, three national championships and, and finish second, I believe, five or six more times. We were kind of, for about eight, eight nine years in a row there, we were right at, uh, right at the door for a national championship. So you were the track coach how many years? Uh, 13. Okay, yeah, so thir- 13 and then the 14th was, take us through the process of, you know, thinking about, hey, you know, this Coach Bijou might be retiring, this might be a new era coming in here. What was 
your thought process along with, you know, your, your wife and your family, like I might have a shot at becoming the, a, a career long dream of mine, the, the head yeah, coach. Yeah, we, we, and it's something we really didn't talk about for a while. And then, and then coach Bijou, you're going to realize the last couple of years that, that he was probably going to be, uh, be done, uh, you know, as a head coach and coach often was, was pretty close to, to being done as well. And he, he, but he wanted to go a couple more years, but not, not in that role as a head coach. So it just worked out that, uh, you know, I could switch over and, and, and do that. And after being there for, for, 13 years as an assistant coach and and uh you know coach Bijou had kind of decided about halfway through the year that yeah he, he wanted that to be the last year he did, wasn't going to tell anybody because yeah. he didn't want like a fanfare or go right. you know every place and very uh, humble guy yeah. he kind of knew that uh you know go, going out even though even though uh coach Van Dees got bought him a duck uh <laughs> you know at the end of the last game so he could you know kind of kind of a decoy type of thing yeah. he's like uh what's this for but yeah yeah he did that but he, he kind of knew that he was going to be done and then he announced to you guys a few weeks later after that so it was it was it was neat to be able to, to be able to do that and and, and switch over from track because it was just too busy to have everything going on but uh you know with the say the transition was good what kind of questions you ask yourself when when you're going to take over the job for somebody that coached you someone you looked up to what what kind of goes through your mind with I, that i think the big thing you just have to you know do is you just be yourself you know, if you can't try to be somebody else or try to, you know, do coach like them, or I know you you can talk like people <laughs> and do that, but I mean, I, you do that in a funny way, but, yeah. but I, I think you just, I think that was the biggest thing that, you know, and, and coach Bijou said that, you know, himself as well. And I think you can't try to be somebody else. You have to do it your own way and, and a coach to have your own coaching style. And, and then I think, the other thing along with that is just making sure that you have good people around you, you know, and, and, uh, one of the, you know, obviously with coach Hoffman who was staying there and then, uh, you know, Jay Schillinger had came in the year before. Mm -hmm. So he was on the staff then, and then immediately having him be the offensive coordinator. And I think just making sure you have a lot of good energetic people around you. Yeah. What, what was your biggest challenge you'd say that first year of being the head coach at Dickinson state? I think just all the, all the bringing all the moving parts together and also just kind of setting the tone for um we have a really good history and we have a lot of tradition and we've kind of got a group of guys that have forgotten about that yeah. because you're just trying to get one win yeah and and i think sometimes then and we had some guys that maybe didn't have the mindset that that we needed to do this or this or this and as you remember then we had to have a couple of those guys couldn't stay on the team right. you weren't one of them no you, no i made it through yeah yeah no you did a great job but it, but you know what i mean you had to we had to just kind of set that culture a little bit too and and uh not that it changed it but just you know just to try to make sure that everybody got on the, got on the same page and i think everybody wanted to win but oh yeah but you gotta want to do what it takes to win and and sometimes that didn't uh, always happen too you know i think this like the summer workouts you know things like that where we didn't have you know as many guys you know coming in in the summer and hey this is what we're gonna do for throwing and you know player led mm -hmm. and then i think it started to happen there and then now you know we started with you guys and then we have 40 or 50 guys here during the summer and that's what it takes to do all those things well 100 percent. i think i I remember one of the big big words you kept using um that first year as your head coach that i can recall was accountability yeah you just kept saying accountability to the workouts accountability to your classes accountability to your teammates and that still resonates with me today so kudos to you i mean it just goes to show kind of the the impact you can have on on a person's life now so speaking of that when you're out sc scouting whether it's in montana you know where Cal, wherever you're yep. at, Arizona, what's some big traits you look at, at at future Blue Hawk football players? Well, I think first we talk about all the time is good person. Yeah. You know, just somebody that you you know you like to take into a motel and a restaurant and and yeah. not not embarrassed to to be to be around and to you know for them to do the right thing and I think that's the first thing you know obviously they they have to be a pretty good player but you know, I think I think just being a good athlete you know we can put a person in a position where we you know maybe it's a D back or receiver or wherever but I think being being that and 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 then I think uh, the third thing is being a good student and and not necessarily having to be a 4.0 student like you were <laughs> yeah. but, <laughs> but uh, but you know the, but it, just to be in class yeah you know and have accountable your, have your teachers know your name yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh and and talk to your teachers and and i ask our guys now who's your teacher i don't know well you need to if you need, you to, need to find out, out yeah you need yeah. to figure it out go in there and, and do that and and uh you know just be accountable yeah and do that and well, and uh, you're gonna be better well, it's just funny the way, you know, whether it's knowing your, who your teacher is, knowing, you know, what the, because that goes the same thing with life. 
whether it's knowing that you're having a job, knowing your boss, knowing your coworkers, asking for help when you need help, looking into the future, having a calendar set. It's just very, and I was one of those guys like, I don't really need to know who I'm sitting next, but it's funny because all this, like all this autograph memorabilia are friends of friends. They're, you know, their dads. And it's just funny how stuff like that can kind of correlate and what you learn in college is truly something you carry on in the rest of your life. Yeah. And as you know, I mean, you'll, I'm sure it's the same with you. You have good high school friends, but those guys that you went with in high school or again, college and, you know, went through the ups and downs with in yeah. college or some of those guys that you're still probably going to always be close to oh, 100%. Uh, with those, with, you know, just going through the ups and downs of, of, of being away and doing all those things. Oh yeah. You grow a lot. And, um, you know, speaking of that, I, I this is a, probably the biggest question I, I really want to ask you about when, when you wake up in the morning, coach Stan, what is like, what drives you to be, cause we just talked about you, you go, you will go from coaching at a, a small town in Montana to win a few state championships to, coaching track to now you know filling in for coach bijou and and doing well at that too what yeah. what drives you what's a, and i'm not ta- i don't want to hear like a cliche like oh i just try what actually does pete stan think about day in and day out to get through because you're busy schedule busy guy what what drives you i think you just one day at a time and just doing the right thing and and uh just uh loving what you do yeah you know i i think that a lot of people get up in the morning and and uh, what and hey, I got to have to go to work. I've never had that. Thought really, in my you know, yeah. you know, right now maybe a little a little earlier than than usual. Now <laughs> we're getting up at get up at five in the morning to to do that. But that's all that's all part of it. I think you have to, you know, you have to have that drive and have and just say hey, I want to go have, go have fun and look look forward to it. I think so many people get up and if you don't enjoy what you're doing, you know go do something else go you know whether, whether some, sometimes people think they have to do this for a career and they have to do that for a career just because that looks good or somebody maybe their family or parents and but go do what you like to do and i think that's the the position i'm in is that enjoy doing that enjoy going and and, and trying to help help young people and, and being around great colleagues we have so many good people in our office you know yeah. the fellow coaches and and uh, like i said no no days like a job is it busy really busy i mean you're talking this last month every saturday and sunday you have recruits in and you're gone gone all day and the coaches are got away from their families and doing that but it's a love you know, but they're also bringing in their their new family you know yeah. with what we talked about i think there's that desire to to be able to help people and and uh, and and have fun what you're doing and, and and enjoy what you're doing and i think and then and then just i think making sure you know you, you you talked about just helping people be successful you know getting there and and every morning there's never a morning that doesn't go by that hey you know somebody somebody was late for this or somebody was in class or i got a call from a teacher or so and so now this is the fourth time you're sick you're really not sick yeah. i mean what, let's let's get to why you know you're not there or you know we have player, players that you know have things that happen in their family that that uh you know you don't people don't understand that and it's like hey why you know why isn't this in class this kid's not getting class he's not doing this or he's showing up late well hey there might be some problem that they have or there's thing going on and and they're trying to get it figured out so i think just trying to figure those things out and that's why i don't think everybody gets treated the same too you know you'd like to have everybody get treated the same but sometimes uh you have uh, you have you have you have people that don't have it you're their family you know yeah. we've you know you know of a guy that that you know we went with the eagles last year and uh you know he was he was with the eagles and and made played a couple of games and made it to training camp and 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 he didn't have a lot a lot with you know he had right. us you know yeah. he had his teammates he had his coaches he had the school and and, and it's quite a story and i think that's just one example if we would have just said hey no jay don't uh you know you, hey you've you're been going, missing yeah. class you know for you get out of here you know and, and it, what's what's he got right i mean he doesn't have you know he's got to have he's got to have some family he's got to have a support system and that's that's a fun fun part about it too did you ever dream that you would make it to, to where you are today did, did, like was this a goal that you wanted to have or I don't know if it's really a debt lib just you know that was a goal of here's where we have to be i think it was just a you know just a day-to-day thing and and uh you know we're going to be as successful as we're going to be and yes it's nice to be a be a head coach at a, at a collegiate level but I, I i always think of it as just being all of us you know i no head coach no assistant coaches that we just out and the players do it all you know everybody does it all together so i guess i haven't really you know, just said, oh, this is what we want to do or want to do next. I think it goes back to, you know, hey, what do you, what do you like to do? You know, do you, you know, you see so that you see so much that in coaching now, you know, the college coaches uh, moving a lot, mm-hmm. you know, and, and then they're, they're mad 
mad at all these players for being in the NCAA port, know, yeah. portal and, and, and they're, moving, the, and they're the moving just as fast. And I think sometimes, uh, you know, just be careful what you wish for sometimes too, because sometimes it's not always better somewhere right. else. You got to be happy with what you're doing too. And I think a lot of coaches don't, they lose that. And then they see, you see their families moving from four or five times and, and in, in their career and just to try to get to that spot. And you get, you got to be careful about that too. And for a lot of guys, it works out, but for, for some, you know, it doesn't because you're, you're kind of chasing the wrong thing too sometimes. Oh no, a hundred percent. And, and that's a good segue to what's been your biggest satisfactory moment thus far in your college career. Oh boy. Just, it can be football or track. It's up. Actually, let's go football. Football. You mean as far as just like an know, aha moment, like I did it. This, well, I, I think, I making. think last year when we we won a you know a, a road playoff game was mm-hmm. was it was a pretty big if you're just picking out individual games i mean we, dickinson state hadn't won a road playoff game in the history and to to go on the road and 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 win that game and, and you know that's what stands out of course then you think about the next week just as much when you lose in the last second but yeah um but you know i think that that one was as far as our program to to be able to do that and then and uh, you know just the just the ins and outs of it too not necessarily the game but uh you know just seeing people be successful at what they do or guys that go on and now their head could they just got their first job at the head coach at the high school and they come back to our camp and help out or you know i'm going to go back to jay liggins and you know he gets back from the eagles and and uh, from the mini camp and and i said where are you going well i'm coming to dickinson i'm coming to help football camp you know that really he, he could have been doing 100 things yeah and his big thing is he wanted to get back and help at our football camp because he just wanted to be around the be around the program and do all that and you know things like that are pretty pretty neat too you know kind of going into that with jay what you know players are different these days you you kind of you know you got twitter you got lots of social media the, the game has changed in a sense and along with the players how do you keep up to like kind of with what's going on these days with players? yeah that's a good that's a good point you, you have to kind of take that to take that road to be able to do that and of course some of our coaches do a lot better at the twitter and and, and all the social media i stop at twitter and okay Facebook. <laughs> at I, the twitter he goes <laughs> I, I, at twitter we don't go any deeper we don't do the twitter we, here we, we don't do, that's what no i do the twitter but don't go any further what's the other what are the other things the you facebook choose? no i do that one what else you got uh snapchat instagram instagram nope myspace no 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 see now you're, you're, losing, you're like a linkedin you're, guy Coach you're Dan. losing me yeah <laughs> But I think the biggest, because that's just the way it is right now. And, and, you know, it used to be when I first started recruiting, you'd call, call the farm and Crosby, North Dakota yeah. and, and talk to the mom, talk to the dad. Then yeah. finally you talked to Dallas and, and you did all that. Now it's, uh, it's texting and maybe, maybe on the phone, but not very much on the phone. It's through social media. Well, I've noticed one thing because I've tried to I try to keep up as much as I can with Dickinson Athletics, and the big thing is like the signing day. We've got the table out there, the jersey, and that wasn't too big of a thing a while back. I'm glad it is now. I mean, it, it's the player deserves that. They're going to no, th- there's no doubt. It's a yeah. different. It's a it's a great thing. Yeah, it's uh, it's what they like. You know, yeah. they they try on the jerseys, they put the helmets on, yeah. they put the whole full pads on, and they it's awesome. post it all over. And, and that's where our, some of our coaches do a really good job yeah. of, of that. And and they send it back to the guys, and the guys have it on their social media and, and all that, and, and uh, which is all good, you know. But I just think, too, that, you know, just trying to get them to remember that, you know, it's all about when, once you sign or whatever it may be, it's all about, can't be about you all the time. And it's mm-hmm. got to be. So sometimes just getting that, but yeah, it, you're right. That's, that's a big thing. Yeah. And it, it just kind of correlates to, you know, what you guys have done as a college too, like making sure that Dickinson brand is out there, making sure Blue Hawk country is strong. You know, I remember that last playoff game that you're talking about, I happened to be home in Crosby for some reason. And they had the game broadcast at Joey's sports bar through a TV on all the TVs. And it's just amazing to see, you know, Dickinson truly branded the way it is. It's a fantastic thing. Yeah, it was that same game. One of your former teammates was at the game, Meyer Bond. Oh, and, what, did he do uh, any singing? He, well, he did. <laughs> He did the night before, and the, the 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 Dickinson kind of took over the one bar that was in Orange City, Iowa. Awesome. And the next day, then you was you know Meyer, you know I, I looked out of the corner of my eye right, right after we had won the game, and I saw something just come flying, <laughs> and all of a sudden then I heard a crash, and Meyer had tried to jump over the top of the railing and didn't didn't make it 
<laughs> and so I look over and, and I didn't, I just talked to him for a minute. Then we went inside and we talked to the guys and the guys were all coming out and I look over and I come out of the locker room and there's Myers got three of our offensive linemen lined up and Myers got a big blood coming <laughs> off the corner of his <laughs> eye and he's showing them pass blocking stuff. <laughs> he's going to get them all. And there's yeah. one of our former players who was an all American out there trying to tell him, well, Hey, this is what you, I saw what you need to do. And they're all sitting there listening to him. Yeah. And I mean, that's what makes the bond special, right? That we were talking about earlier is family yeah. and Meyer's a fantastic guy. And he's, he's kind of following that dream of, you know, he's, he's in masters or he's getting, yeah, he's, he's in a, yeah, he, he does dirt is what yeah, he does. He's a dirt yeah, guy. He follow, yeah. He's a, yeah. He's a soil, soil science, yeah, soil. Uh, soil science guy that's going from master's degree to a doctorate degree. So and, that's and doing once again, and, yeah. do what you love to do. And, and, and speaking of do what you love to do, a question I had written down here that I really wanted to ask you was what's your top five priorities in, in both your personal and coaching and in what order would you rank them? Oh boy. And, and that's a good question. Yeah. You don't think about that. Yeah. Uh, as, as much, um, you know, with that part of it, you know, you, you, as far as the, you know, the professional part of it. Yeah. Well, just professional yeah. and kind of, you can mix it up a little bit. Yeah, too. It doesn't and, matter. It's well, just... obviously, our, you know, our family, we have a big, big family. We don't have a big family, but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Stands. yeah, the extended yeah. family. I mean, we, we do a lot, uh, with the family that we have in, in town and, and my mom's in town and, and Candace's dad's in town and, and, uh, you know, so that obviously so number one is family, family okay. and faith is important mm-hmm. too, you know, in that part of it. And I think, uh, um, you know, just, uh, I, I think just the professionally along with it, I think, I think just trying to help, uh, you know, just be being professional with, uh, with, you know, with, with, uh, everything, whether it's, you know, being the athletic director or being a coach and, and just trying to help as many people as we can, you know, because, you know, the athletic director, they don't line up at the office in the morning to come say hi to you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they line up because there's something probably something wrong. something wrong and, and trying to help, you know, people through that. So I think that would be another, 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 another one there too, for sure. How would you describe your, your philosophy and, and your coaching style? Uh, I think, uh, you know, as far as philosophy, I think just doing, doing the right thing. I mean, if you, if you're going to get specific on, you know, I, I think, you know, we want to be, be, you know, if you're going to specific, specific, but yet still a little bit general, I mean, just being a really physical team, mm-hmm. uh, you know, being able to run the ball, being able to, being able to stop the run, um, playing hard. And, and you, you'd think that's just an easy thing, but it doesn't, you don't always see that with teams. You, you know, you talk about at the fresh professional level, high school level, you know, I think just getting, uh, you know, the, the teams that just play hard and, and, and have fun. And, 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 uh, once again, uh, you know, on the field, we're going to, we're going to get after the, the players and try to push them, you know, to as hard a level as they can be and off the, off the field where we're, we're going to be there for them, you know, yeah. and I think it's going to be that, that kind of that separation between being on the field and Hey, let's we're going to go be competitive and we're going to try to win and we're going to push our players really hard. But then when you're off the field, then let's, let's support them and, and, uh, guide them and do all that. And when, when you're looking, because you've had some turnover with, with coaches mm-hmm. moving on to, you know, whether it's Montana, um, graduate assistant positions, what do you look at when you're looking to bring on a new coach? What- I, th- I think people that are good people and professional and that, uh, you know, have, relate well to the players. It goes back to what you talked about. You know, you get guys that can do social media, the guys that you know understand the you know the the, the players and can support them and that care. I think that's what you look for. You, the, the the X's and O's is fine. You know, everybody yeah. can do that. But you see, you see a lot of guys that can coach really well. But it doesn't matter um, if you know, if you're not treating the players right and you're not caring about the players. And I think the other thing is you know is you got to go recruit. You know, I think that's the guys that can re- recruit really well because you can you can be a great coach and you know and know everything you want to do. But if their guys are better than your guys, it doesn't really matter what you know. It's just what you're playing. And then getting that across to your players that it's what they know, what they can go out and do. And I talk to sometimes I talk to our coaches about that and just like whoa, let's let's cut down the game plan. Let's make it a little, let's make <laughs> yeah. it a little simpler. You got it down, but I guarantee if you gave them a test right now half of them wouldn't know what the heck you're talking about. So let's, let's get it, let's get it cut down. And so they know, uh, what to do. Cause they, they're the ones that have to go out and execute it. And I think just things like that, making sure to do that. Yeah. That's an interesting point. I mean, cause you don't want to overcoach, but you don't want to undercoach. So, I mean, it just, 
it's kind of a you got to meet in the middle somewhere yeah it? yeah you do you do and and just making sure you get them like i say you get them going in the right right direction and have a have a different plan and that's why you know that's why I don't you know we have an offensive coordinator defensive coordinator that they can handle do a lot of that and give you know give them those type of things and i'll just help you know give them some guidance on whatever it might be and i'm on the defensive side of the ball but really it's just a matter of just hey let's just make this simple and be good teachers and and uh you know be good be good examples and that's why i think that's what we look for you know going back to what you originally said is you know in our coaching staff is, is guys like that i think guys that are stable too and you know not looking you know to go anywhere and everywhere and i'm all about hey if there's a person that is a coach on the coaching staff that hey he maybe he he wants to be a head coach or wants to go on and do this then i'll be fully supportive we mm-hmm. have a couple of young guys that have been in our program that you played with yeah. that, you know they're following their dreams and it's a coaching that, tree it that's awesome to everybody yeah. yeah and that's awesome and they should do that um you know and uh and do that but just make sure you're doing it to better yourself not just to go somewhere just to go somewhere and that's what some of our young guys that that played for us are doing right now and and that's that's pretty cool to see well it's funny because they they asked chris jones that defensive tackle for the kansas city chiefs he was on a, a program the other day and they said what did andy reed say what did he say before the big super bowl like what what words of wisdom and chris jones said he came in he said let your personality show yeah and then they ran out on the field and i think that's kind of what you were saying too because i mean it's just about you know certain players are certain ways like Meyer Bond's going to be very structured very hey let's do this let's do that where you have like a, a Tanner Leak if you will like a Mr. I am going to try to lose this guy this way and they just you know yep. it's every player is different yep and that's and that's why you got that's why I said you, you sometimes are treated differently too yeah. you know people want them to all be cookie cutter and be treated yeah. the same but they but sometimes that doesn't work sometimes you know sometimes guy you don't have to say one word to to whoever and they're going to go out and perform at a high level but other other it's another guy you might have to you know hey talk to more before a game or you know this or that or if you know some person you can get on pretty hard and they because you know that they can handle that and other people no way you know that, yeah. that type of thing and I think it's just kind of getting that all molded together yeah 100 um, percent now coach every guest of mine that comes on here I, I like them to to kind of give me their motive to life I like to call it to you know when I was talking before we went live here about swim lessons kind of getting through the tough times overcoming the big boundaries trying to get through you know failing a class or you know not getting the spot you want on the team mm-hmm. and and trying to you know because it's going to go to come down the road in life too so what do you preach to yourself because i mean you've been through a lot you, you've been through whether it's you know in your personal life coaching life lots of changes with this lots of changes with that what's something you tell yourself day in and day out i know you said one day at a time but what's something you could leave everybody here with this podcast and swim lessons on something to live by yeah i, I will go back to the one day at a time but you know what i <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I think I, yeah. I think uh, everything. It's a good ha- point. But everything happens for a reason too, yeah. and uh, you you have to understand that uh, you know. If you, if, I think to me, if you are a good person and and you have the right intentions, that eventually good things are going to happen. You know, it, it may not happen overnight. It may not happen next week, but I think if you if you have those good intentions and and you want to you'd love to do what you want to do, uh, it, it's it's eventually going to happen for you. And you may not see it, and somebody else may not see it, but eventually that that's going to happen. And I guess that's something that I that I that I would say, you know. And I think it sometimes, uh, you know, people are are too worried about you know this talent or or about uh, you know I got to have this degree or I got to have this, and and I. I I won't go back to it again. I mean, love what, do what you love to do and yeah. be, be good at it. And I think that's, you know, there's a lot, you know, you have to over, overcome, uh, you know, uh, whether, whether it's professionally and, and, and personally, and it's gonna, it's gonna take some time, but, uh, but if you're doing the right thing and you associate yourself with people who didn't get that, I think the other thing is, I would say too, is just really get that support group you know get that get that and i've talked about this when i've talked to you know graduations you know speech just different things like that it's just like get your board of directors you know some you know get get the people that you know that you can call and you can you can count on and 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 that might not be a, a parent even maybe it's you know it's it's a friend or it's a teacher or it's a, somebody it's a coach or whatever but no one get that support group that can kind of get to you where you want to get i think sometimes people are always saying i got to go here and, and i got to get to this and that this guy's person's going to help me and a lot of times it's those those people you know back in college are going to help you or that high school coach is going to help you whoever it might be and get that get that group and and then keep that group close, you know, with you 
through your life. And I think that, uh, that's good. That's important too. You always have that, that board of directors support group. I mean, I have friends that my high school coach that I played for and, and, uh, and, uh, you know, high school, you know, the coaches from my high school days, 30 some years ago that, that are a great support group that still come to our games at Dickinson yeah. state and stay afterwards and, and just, just loyal and supportive. And, and I think, yeah, if you, you know, you can have that and they'll, they'll also not men, not and don't be afraid to tell people, you know, the truth yeah that hey you know you need to get get this done you need to straight you know and have that support group that that group being honest with you not saying hey come on down, let's go go you know no t- hey no really you need to do this this is you know and, and people you can rely on count on and i think that that's big too have a good inner circle yeah yeah um to, to close out we've we kind of do this thing uh it's called 10 for 10 and i'm going to ask you 10 questions oh boy and you have to answer them as fast as possible Faster than a Jay Liggins on a, on a corner route. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to answer these fast and um, not very long. Just some to... of, some of them are they'll be correct answers and some of them are just personal answers. Okay? okay, okay, and away we go. Favorite NFL team? Redskins. Favorite NBA team? Celtics. Favorite MLB team? A uh, Red Sox. Favorite male actor? Oh boy, we'll say Hanks because that's the last guy I saw on TV the other night. Okay, cats or dogs? Dogs, definitely. Fa- <laughs> Favorite female actress? Oh, Candace, who's one? <laughs> <laughs> we just saw Jennifer Aniston on TV too. So oh, that's we'll say a good her. one. Okay, you see how much I watch movies. <laughs> where does the N- where does the NBA team nickname the Mavericks play at? Dallas. Where does the NFL team n- nickname the Cowboys play at? Dallas. Where does Zeke Elliott play for in the NFL? Dallas. Who is your favorite Blue Hawk of all time? For sure, Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Coach Stan, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so yeah. much, my friend. Yeah, thanks I for having me I appreciate coming, and I know you got a Suns game to go to. Nope. And, and Do you have any closing remarks? You'd I, like I do. I just uh, appreciate you having me in and, and all the great things you're doing. Just keep doing that. And I can't wasn't any happier than I was in that Super Bowl. We were thinking about in Dickinson, and, and our my, a lot. I think I've just told you that my mom's a Kansas yeah. City native, and everybody was excited, and and you were on my mind the whole day. We were just wondering what Dallas was up to <laughs> all night long. Maybe we don't want to know what Dallas was up to, uh, but the Chiefs finally persevering and winning that oh. Super Bowl. That was I was really happy for you. It was an awesome. I was I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't drink too much. I had three or four to you know kind of take the edge off. And there's a there's a there's a Chiefs bar down the street called Pub Rock. And I'm not sure if you see on my social media, but it's just packed with Chief fans. They do the whole war chant and everything. And uh, so I only had three or four, and everybody's wondering, you know, because I like to, you know, have fun on the Sundays. Yeah. They're like, Dallas, what's wrong? I'm like, I'm just a little nervous. You know, leave me alone. And then I didn't drink very much until it was 20 to 10 with about six minutes left. I'm like, okay, I'll take a Morgan Coke. So I, thought, <laughs> I, thought it was, I thought it might be over, but they persevered. And, and just like what you talked about earlier, just one play at a time, one thing at a time, I they, think. They did, and, and I think, and I'm not trying to blow your horn, but that with their quarterback they have back i think they could be happening more than a few more times down the road if they stay healthy they're a they're a dynamic fun team to watch oh yeah 100 percent. but um thanks again for coming yeah. on and and uh appreciate you and thanks for everything you've done for me yeah. in my life and thanks again for coming on and and with that that is a wrap thanks, thanks coach stan I told you it's going to be a party.